Aerodynamics was established in 1945 as a company to manufacture small amusement rides and other machinery. After building a small number of rides in these early years, the big break came when Walt Disney expressed interest in an aero product in 1952. This small car ride, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, was the beginning of Arrow's long relationship with Disney. For the ride builder, the most important technical development with Disney came in 1959. Looking for a new ride to recreate the experience of bobsleds on an unused section of the park, Walt Disney wanted a roller coaster. Traditional wooden tracked coasters wouldn't be a possibility for the planned ride, and early steel track couldn't handle the sharp bends. The builders at Arrow were pressed to develop a solution, and the end result would define the company's future. Track made of tubular steel could support the layout of Disney's ride, and was easy to produce. As a result, the Matterhorn bobsleds opened to the public in 1959 as the world's first tubular steel tracked roller coaster. The success of this coaster made the Arrow name known outside of Disney, and parks across the country wanted in. The company continued to innovate through the 1960s and early 70s, creating log flumes, mine train coasters, and other rides. By the mid-60s, a common phrase in the amusement park industry world was, every park has an arrow. Continuing to experiment with and develop their steel track, Arrow saw possibilities previously unimaginable in the world. In 1975, they completed a coaster prototype that turned the amusement park industry upside down. Aptly named Corkscrew, the prototype became the first steel roller coaster to take riders through two inversions. Very early in the history of roller coasters, inversions were attempted, but never perfected or made safe. Corkscrew was the first to complete two inverting elements safely, and to Arrow, this opened up unlimited possibilities. Within a few years of Corkscrew's completion, numerous clones of the ride began appearing in parks throughout the country. Innovations continued at the same time. In 1976, a vertical loop was introduced. And in 1978, the Loch Ness Monster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg introduced the first interlocking loops. Riding on the success of the corkscrew model, Arrow decided to try something new going into the 80s. And the result was meant to be an even bigger innovation than their inversions. In 1981, the Bat opened at Kings Island as the first aero suspended swinging coaster. The cars hung below the track and swung on hinges around corners. True to Arrow's promise, no one had ever seen anything like it. Unfortunately, this prototype wouldn't enjoy the success of the previous one. The untested coaster suffered from incredible amounts of downtime and mechanics were replacing wheels and shocks on the cars almost daily. These complications led Kings Island to remove the bat after the 1983 season. Arrow's new creation only ran for three years. All was not lost for the biggest name in ride building though, as parks were interested in other records. They wanted as many inversions as possible, and Arrow's coasters were perfect. The late 80s saw the war for bragging rights intensify. In 1987, Arrow constructed Vortex for Kings Island. It was the first coaster to go upside down six times. Its claim to fame was short-lived, however, as 1988 saw the building of Shockwave for Six Flags Great America. This was the first coaster to go upside down seven times. Two more seven inversion coasters to be constructed in the following years, Great American Scream Machine in 1989 for Six Flags Great Adventure, and Viper in 1990 for Six Flags Magic Mountain. At the same time, Arrow had learned from the bat's mistakes and perfected the swinging model, which was becoming popular as well with multiple installations by the end of the decade. There was one coaster, however, that would stand to have more of an impact than all of these. Cedar Point was looking to turn heads in a new and exciting way and turn to Arrow for ideas. The result wasn't like anything Arrow had built before. In 1989, Cedar Point opened Magnum XL200 the first coaster to ever exceed 200 feet in height. Arrow had undisputed control of the American coaster market, but the next decade wouldn't be so kind. In the 1990s, Arrow began building coasters that tested the limits of their tried and true roller coaster design. 
The first example of this was Steel Phantom, built in 1991 for a small park called Kennywood. The ride tried to combine the height and speed of Magnum XL200 with the loops and corkscrews of their other coasters. The result was a very uncomfortable ride that left many riders with neck pains. The coaster only ran for 10 years. In 2000, it was closed to receive major modifications. One year after Steel Phantom came another coaster that pushed the limits of Arrow's track design yet again. Busch Gardens Williamsburg wanted an ambitious new steel coaster, but the park was unable to get the manufacturer they wanted to build it. Instead, they gave the plans for the coaster to Arrow, who had to make several changes to accommodate for their track design. The result of this was Draken Fire, opening in 1992 after suffering technical problems on opening day. The coaster very quickly received a reputation for being rough, and the number of riders dropped yearly. The coaster was closed in 1998, after only seven years, and it was removed shortly after. Arrow had finally hit the limit of what their decades-old track design could handle. One factor that played into the roughness of these coasters was Arrow's design process. By the 90s, most roller coaster companies had begun designing their coaster layouts on computers. This allowed coasters to achieve a smooth layout and led to the success of companies like Bollinger and Mabillard, who were among the first to use the new system. Arrow, however, insisted on using hand-drawn designs on draft paper. This limited the possible smoothness of their rides and was characterized by many of the rough elements in older coasters. At the same time, a business decision Arrow made in the 70s was starting to come back to get them. Wanting to get into the international market, Arrow contracted the Dutch company Vekoma to handle the building of their rides outside of the United States. This involved sharing their track design with the company as well. After a few years under the agreement, Vekoma saw opportunity with their new Arrow track and began building their own rides in America using Arrow track design. By the 90s, they were producing many successful coasters of their own. Arrow felt the pressure from this competition as well as their technical limitations and didn't build much of anything for the rest of the decade. On the brink of financial collapse in the late 90s, Arrow finally made the switch to computer design for their coasters. The result was a hope that the company had a future. Dollywood opened Tennessee Tornado in 1999, the first computer-designed aerodynamics coaster. It featured all new elements and loops, and most importantly, it was a smooth ride. The success of this coaster could have been the start of a new era for the company, but instead, they decided to think big. Six Flags Magic Mountain was looking for something the world had never seen before, and Arrow was looking to deliver on that promise. Taking advantage of the abilities of their new design technology, a coaster was created that changed people's perception of roller coasters. X opened in 2002 as what was called a fourth dimension roller coaster. The seats were placed on the side of the cars and would rotate 360 degrees as the coaster traversed the track. Although it was a huge hit, it was also a blow to Arrow's finances. Still in trouble after their low period in the 90s, the company was on the verge of collapse. The extreme costs resulting from the research and development of X were simply too high, and Aerodynamics filed for bankruptcy at the end of 2001, before X even opened. It would be the last ride Aero would ever build. Although they are gone, Aerodynamics can be credited with many of the innovations of the roller coaster industry and a good number of their classic rides still operate today. From the record breakers of Vortex, Viper, and Magnum XL200, to the first prototype Corkscrew and even Disney's Matterhorn bobsleds, Aerodynamics coasters will be giving rides for many more years to come.